Staying lean and eating clean has definitely been a challenge during lockdown while working from home. These are my go-to easy, quick, and delicious recipes that are fun to make, great to eat, and come in at around 2,000 calories. Starting off my day with bone broth, I absolutely adore bone broth for my gut health and for cartilage and for skin. Today's bone broth is from Il Covo. I'm also going to be making an omelette for breakfast using these free range brown eggs, some chopped kale, feta and green onions and of course some scotch bonnet to give it some kick. I'm using this Dash egg machine that I use every single day. It has a poaching tray, it has an omelette tray, and it also has a tray for hard boiling eggs. I love this little device. Honestly, I use it every day, and I'm gonna be making an omelette with the omelette tray. Starting off with some Scotch bonnet, you have to be very careful to remove the seeds because the seed is where the spice is. So take your time and do not touch your eyes after doing this. Make sure you wash your hands very well because it burns. Once my veggies are all chopped up, I'm making two omelets today, one for me and one for Bay. So the great thing about this egg tray is that you can just make your omelet right in it and use less dishes, easy cleanup. So I'm going with that kale, lots of it, feta, mmm, I love feta, it's so creamy and salty and yummy and good. Some of that scotch bonnet. Give them a little stir, add some water, and the great thing about this machine is that it cooks everything with steam so you don't have to worry about adding butter or oil. My bone broth from Il Cobo is ready. So yummy and so warm. It's getting cold, so this definitely hits the spot. The cutest thing about this egg machine? It has the funniest little alarm and ooh, look how fluffy that omelet is. So good. I add some green onions on top and for Steve's omelet, he had his with bread. I typically skip the bread for my omelet personally, but feel free to add it because it is so good as an egg sandwich. Wouldn't be breakfast without coffee. I love a dark roast coffee in the morning. These coffee beans are from KX. They are so oily and so fragrant. I add my organic MCT oil rather than milk to coffee to give it some creaminess without adding dairy. And there is my perfect cup of morning joe. Mm, I could give it a kiss. I love coffee. Lunchtime, I am making a very quick lunch with tuna. While working from home, I don't have all the time in the world to make lunch really. So olive oil, lemon, cabbage, carrots, celery, parsley, a little bit of quinoa boiling on the side while I get everything ready. Simmer that. Chop up any veggies you have. These are just what I had on hand. I like crunchy tuna salads. I add some salad dressing to give it a little bit of tang. Drained my tuna, throw that in there. Some mayonnaise made with olive oil, not canola oil. Mayonnaise is very fatty, so be careful. You can lower the amount of mayonnaise that you have in your tuna salad if you're looking to restrict calories and fat. Zest it up, give it a nice stir. Like I said, tuna salad is so easy and I would never bring tuna salad into the office back in the day. So it's great to be able to eat something that I love without feeling self-conscious about it. Season it however you want. I like to add kick as usual. So I'm throwing some sriracha on top as well. Once my quinoa is nice and fluffy, I add it to my bowl. And then I add some kale, Swiss chard, spinach mix, which I've been loving as of late. 
and top it off with that tuna salad after chilling it for a couple minutes in the fridge, if possible. And this is such a colorful meal, it just makes me happy to look at it and eat it as well. Honestly love tuna, it is so versatile and so yummy and it makes for a great quick lunch. Perfect for eating at the desk if you're working from home and can't get away from the computer. This is colorful, healthy, yummy. For a snack, I am having these banana oat chocolate chip muffins. I'll link the recipe in the description box with some peanut butter on top, just for a little fun snack alongside some peppermint tea. Dinner. So first off, I am prepping this eggplant about a couple hours before I start the rest of dinner. And that is because I drain the eggplant so that it can get nice and crispy when I cook it. Eggplant does retain a lot of water, so it's a good way to get some of that water out. So I cube my eggplant. Honestly, one of my favorite vegetables. I think it is so versatile as well and delicious. I put it in a strainer over a bowl and then I salt it and I use a lot of salt. And I learned this from Pro Home Cooks, one of my favorite YouTube cooking channels, because you do need to drain the water out and dehydrate the eggplants a little bit. So you can over salt it, but don't worry. A lot of the salt is gonna drip down. So you can be liberal with it. For dinner, I am having some acorn squash on the side as well, which is like the hardest vegetable to cut open. This is a Japanese knife. It's apparently supposed to be like the best knife ever, but maybe Bay can come and save us. Oh, what would I do without my bae? He is a lifesaver and a dinner saver. Maybe it was the knife. Whatever it was, I could not have done this myself. So satisfying. <laughs> okay, we finally got that acorn squash cut in half. I am going to caramelize this acorn squash with some brown sugar. So I just crumble some brown sugar inside. And then get some real Canadian maple syrup, the only maple syrup you should ever be buying. And just drizzle that on top as well. And this is a great way to make your acorn squash taste almost like a dessert. It's so yummy and you can get rid of the excess maple syrup and brown sugar, but it'll soak into the acorn and penetrate it, which is lovely. So I'm gonna bake that for one hour at 400 degrees. After a couple of hours, my eggplant has been drained. As you can see, tons of water has been pulled out. And I am going to season my eggplant with some Acropolis olive oil. Eggplant is full of antioxidants and nutrients. It's one of my go-to veggies on the side, alongside broccoli. Broccoli is delicious and is a great way to get some greens into your diet. So I'm gonna cut up this head of broccoli and I'm gonna save my broccoli end piece for chicken stock. You should be saving all your veggie ends for chicken stock. So I throw that on a sheet pan. At about the halfway mark, I throw that into the oven. And now I'm gonna work on my haddock. So I'm using sustainably sourced haddock and I'm going to jerk this haddock tonight with some Cool Runnings jerk seasoning and that Acropolis extra virgin olive oil. Yaman! So make sure when you're cooking something from frozen or chicken, just pat it dry before you start to season it. Mm. 
And then I'm throwing that jerk seasoning, yaman, on my haddock. That's how bored I am that I'm willing to embarrass myself with my really bad Jamaican accent. I have no shame, no shame in the game. Mix up your jerk seasoning, throw it on your fish. Today has been a pescatarian day. I try to alternate. I really limit the amount of red meat that I eat lately because I'm just not lifting and going to the gym as often as I used to. And I've just been trying to have some fish and chicken way more often and doing lots of cardio at home. So once my jerk fish is nicely seasoned, I'm throwing that in this steam oven. It uses steam to cook. You're more than welcome to grill this, to bake it, to steam it in a steamer basket. Whatsoever you choose, have it your way. It's your dinner. So that's gonna take about 12 minutes and everything's gonna be ready at the same time. And voila, perfectly roasted broccoli, nice and crispy eggplant, some gorgeously caramelized acorn squash and some jerk fish. Mm. The yummiest, yummiest dinner I've had in a while. And it's pretty lean too. I reserve a teeny bit of that brown sugar maple syrup. And look at how perfectly cooked this eggplant is. Everything is so yummy. Thanks for watching guys. Mm -mm -mm.